morning, y'all. I'm Dr. Marta Perez, and you're here for another episode of Five Minute Birth Prep Friday. Today is episode two. Did my water break? In today's episode, we'll go over three things. One, what is amniotic fluid? Two, when will my water break? And number three, what to do if my water breaks? So let's get started. Part one, what is amniotic fluid? Amniotic fluid is a very proteinaceous, fluid that is actually created by your baby's urine. That's right, amniotic fluid is all just baby pee. The next question is, why doesn't amniotic fluid build the whole time throughout pregnancy? Well, there's some complex balancing mechanisms. Part of it is actually that your baby swallows the amniotic fluid, so it goes into the gut and gets back absorbed. And then finally, there's a little bit of um, fluid balance that takes place at the placenta versus your circulation edge. So that's how amniotic fluid is created and managed. We can measure the amount of amniotic fluid by measuring the size of the pocket, one pocket, or multiple pockets at different times during pregnancy. When there's problems with the amount of amniotic fluid, too little amniotic fluid is called oligohydramnios. When the amniotic fluid level is very high, it's called polyhydramnios. What is the amniotic membrane? So the amnion is the fetal level and the chorion is the maternal level. Those things fuse in the first trimester and become one membrane. As pregnancy gets further along, pressure from the uterus, as well as some protein changes that break things down towards the end of pregnancy, make that membrane a little weaker. It can also be made weaker by things like infections, etc. Part two. When will my water break? So I don't know about you, but before I became an OBGYN, I was always seeing on TV shows and movies that pregnant women would be going about their business and then all of a sudden, <laughs> but actually someone's water breaking before they start going into labor only happens eight to 10% of the time. When that happens, sometimes it stirs up the labor process, but other times it doesn't quite. You'll come in, to see your provider and we'll start an induction of labor with Pitocin. We do that because if women who break their water but labor doesn't happen wait versus women who break their water and have an induction, the women who have an induction, both them and their babies are healthier. Here are the stats. The amount of postpartum fever and chorioamnionitis are much lower in the women who had an induction. Also lower rates of your baby having the infection or being admitted to the NICU and there's no difference in the C-section rates. Another term is AROM, A-R-O-M, and it means artificial rupture of membranes. That means your doctor or provider actually helped break the membrane layer to rupture the water. Why would your doctor or birth provider do an AROM? It's because it's one of the most natural ways to keep labor moving along and shorten the time in labor. Your uterus can be much more efficient if it's not trying to contract on the water balloon, but on the baby itself. So as your OBGYN, if I'm going to break a patient's water, I use this little thing called an ami hook. It's a little plastic device. And as I'm doing a cervical exam, I gently guide it along my fingers and just nick the amniotic membrane very gently. Now this doesn't hurt. The same as your hair is protein and when you get a haircut, it doesn't hurt. Breaking the water does not hurt you and it does not hurt the baby. Here's a close up of the amni hook. You can see it's very blunted so that it doesn't cause any injury to you or your body. And it just has a tiny, teeny, tiny little hook at the end that we can hook the membrane. Underline how safe AROM is. A study by McCones et al, which was a randomized trial, the best type of research study, showed that in women who were undergoing an induction of labor, and it was their very first baby, the women who had their water broken or AROM early in the labor process before four centimeters versus those that had it later on in the labor process or not at all, rates of time till the baby was delivered were much shorter in the early AROM group. In addition to that, it did not raise the rates of infection or C-section or change anything with maternal or fetal outcomes. So all the outcomes were the same, just shorter time in labor. Part three, what do I do if my water breaks? So if you think your water broke, but you're not sure, Dr. Perez, why would I not be sure? When you're full term pregnant, there's a lot of leakage of urine that occurs. And sometimes when the water breaks, it's a big splash, but sometimes it's just a little bit of fluid and it's totally normal to have a lot of discharge at the end of pregnancy. So it can be hard to tell and that's okay. But if you think your water broke, when you come in, these are the tests your provider will do. They will do a pelvic exam with a speculum. While the speculum is in the vagina at the cervix, they'll look to see if there's pooling of the clear amniotic fluid. They'll collect a little bit of any fluid or discharge they see, and they'll do two tests with it. 
One is called the nitrazine test. Nitrazine is pH paper. The vagina should have an acidic pH, but amniotic fluid is neutral, so it'll look more basic on the pH. The other test they'll do is called ferning, where they'll put a sample of the fluid on a glass slide and then actually look under the microscope to see if there's ferning. Ferning happens because the amniotic fluid is full of proteins and salts, and when they dry, they form this like beautiful fern picture on the slide. Here's a picture of it. The final thing is that I've been talking about rupture of membranes at term, which is 37 weeks and beyond. If you are before 37 weeks of pregnancy, I want you to go see your doctor right away. Thank you so much for joining me for episode two of five minute birth prep on Friday. We covered everything about breaking your water. If you wanna know more about going into labor, check out episode one. And if you're interested in more information about periods and birth control and everything not related to actual labor, check out my Instagram because I cover all of that there. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends and families and I'll see you next week.